Hello and welcome to the marketplace. It is Tuesday now, time for your business. Here on the marketplace, we are going to analyze the market, talk about trends and investments, and how global development is going to actually impact your business activities here in Ghana and also in Africa. And on the program today, some commercial banks in the country face possible fold up if government does not quickly clear huge debt owed by some state owned enterprises here in Ghana. And also, the finance minister, Seth Tekpe, assures government working hard to clear all debt to sustain affected banks. And also on the program today, we'll be looking at banks and specialized deposit taking bill passed by parliament to address gaps and inconsistencies in the banking law. All these are more here on the marketplace. You can stay interactive with us on Twitter. Our handle is Joy Business GH and on Facebook, Joy Business. For more business stories, you can log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. My name is John Kojo Amwako. Marketplace returns shortly after the break. We believe there's nothing Africa can't achieve when we're all on the same team. That's why we're right behind you, offering a full range of accounts for everyone. From Echobank Direct and Classic Accounts to Advantage and Premier Banking by Echobank. Because there's no limit to how far you can go when you're part of our team. Echobank, the Pan-African Bank. You will come back. Some 11 commercial banks in the country could soon fold up. That's if steps are not taken to quickly clear huge debt owed by some state owned institutions. George Raffi has the rest of the story. Meanwhile, the finance minister said that we responded to assertions that some Ghanaian banks are facing the threat of collapse. Speaking on the Super Morning Show on Joy FM this morning, he assured that government is working hard to address the current challenges facing the banking sector. We are working with the Institute of Bankers, and let me assure the nation, mm. our banks will not go down. I think that is the assurance that the governor, you know, was giving just to assure the nation you know, the banks, you know, will not go down. We have had experience of banks going down. The last time was the, during the non-performing assets recovery trust a very mm. long time ago. It's been 35 years. Mm. We've not had, you know, bank failure apart from maybe when we came close, like Merchant Bank, you know, steps were taken quickly. We know the energy situation. One of the, you know, solutions that was proposed is the energy levy. It took time for the levies to come in. Now the banks see the level of flows they are comfortable to come and have a discussion that there will be some resources to complement, you know, the VRA in particular flows, the ECG flows that were not, you know, adequate to, you know. So I just want to assure the general okay. public coming out of your business news. Our view, and I say, is that some of these things, since there's a fourth review coming, and as the program is ending in 2017, we could have handled some of these things, you know, going into the fourth review rather than making them a precondition. Yeah. You know, for you know, for example, information on SOEs. You know the size of SOEs in Ghana. Take ECG alone. Yeah. ECG has an office in almost every district, except for the new yeah. ones. So, if you want to catch, you know, analysis or situation, you know, on ECG, it takes time. This is something which, if it were put in, say, a Ford review, you know, would be. But whatever it took 
you know, we, you know, we are responding. And that is what, you know, has resulted in the situation that we're talking about. So mm -hmm. we are responding to the information. Part of it is the debt. If we didn't know the amount, we wouldn't be negotiating with the banks. Mm -hmm. In another development, the Minister of Finance and also the Acting Minister of Energy, Seth Tekpe, said is considering dual energy processing policy, which will enable independent power producers to utilize dual sources of producing electricity here in Ghana. The emergency power supply, you know, was so much that it affected our plan for Sankofa. We had expected to bring some independent power producers on board the Sankofa when it came on stream in 2018, because that's going to be the largest gas supply. Why has it affected it? The, there was no intermediate you know, need to increase you know, the, the uh, companies that could give us power for the car power to you know, other, such that their presence now is affecting the projected shortfall that was, you know, uh, for Sankofa mm. going forward. So I think that we are on course to utilizing our own gas to resolve the, what you would say, systemic challenges that we face. Mm. A Kosomo, you know, dam, you know, which brought in Bui. The Bui itself is, you know, also affected by the levels. And then the disruptions in West Africa, gas pipeline supply, that plan is on course. Mm. But in the course of doing this, you, had, you faced new challenges, which was the FPSO you know, incident. And then just when the gas supply was you know, uh, restored, you had you know, the disruption. So what do you do? This is where you move into dual you know, energy processing policy and say, if you are an IPP and you are coming, don't come in with only gas, you know, or LCO, that is the, but come in with dual fuel, you know, use so that you can switch. Now, let's take George Office report on the threat to the survival of banks in the country should the government not do much about the debt situation with the banking sector. The majority of the institutions that could be collapsing because of this development are said to be local banks. This issue came up in October last year after two accounting firms that were commissioned by the IMF to measure the current status of banks in the country recommended that steps should be taken to recapitalize these banks to prevent them from going under or folding up. Finance Minister Seth Tepe recently in an interview with the Daily Graphic noted that the IMF is, for instance, demanding work to be completed on a strategy to recapitalize some of these banks as part of what he describes as new conditions the fund is pushing before the executive board of the IMF meets to review Ghana's performance under the program. For some industry analysts and even some banks that Joy Business have spoken to, the challenge have come about because of the inability of some state-owned institutions, especially those in the energy and power sector, to pay loans granted to them on time and even some private firms that have rendered services to government. But the payment have delayed. Some financial analysts that Joy Business have spoken to also argue that they find this development interesting. Following recent report by the Bank of Ghana, that commercial banks in the country are in a sound financial position following two stress tests carried out. For some of these state-owned institutions, they argue that they are not able to pay these loans because government is owing them. Some banking analysts have also argued that even if these banks do not go under, the development could result in interest rates hitting the roof as some banks try to pass on the delays in paying these loans to new borrowers. Now, let's look at the topical issue for the day. The banking industry has seen the passage of yet another legislation to further deepen the quality of financial intermediation in the country, barely a month after the passage of the Deposit Protection Bill. The bank's unspecialized deposit-taking bill is expected to address gaps and inconsistencies in the banking laws and deepen cooperation with regional counterparts to improve regulation and supervision of foreign banks that are active in the country. Here's a Business Desk report. 
The passage of the bill is seen as a major boost to the banking sector and follow on the heels of the Deposit Protection Bill, which the 275 members of the legislature passed last week. According to contents of the banks and specialized deposit taking bill, it will seek to address the supervisory and regulatory gaps to enable the Bank of Ghana to pretend financial service providers in the microfinance businesses, address bank resolution, ensure financial consumer protection, and promotion of innovation and financial inclusion. The bill is expected to strengthen licensing procedures, consolidate supervision, and cross-border supervision, given the growing importance of conglomerates and foreign banks. The banks and specialized deposit taking bill is expected to address gaps and inconsistencies in the banking laws and deepen cooperation with regional counterparts to improve the regulation and supervision of foreign banks that are active in the country. In addition, government needs to provide appropriate mechanisms to minimize financial system stability and address emerging risks anchored on effective supervisory and regulatory measures as well as the introduction of new schemes. Among the highlights of the bill is to deal with restrictions on lending and investment, which prohibits a bank or specialized deposit-taking institution from granting advances, loans, or credit facilities, including guarantees, against the security of the shares of the bank or specialized deposit-taking institution, the shares of its financial holding company, the shares of any of its subsidiaries, or the shares of any of the subsidiaries of its financial holding company. Meanwhile, a member of the Finance Committee of Parliament, Benjamin Kodo, has lauded the passage of the bill. He urged financial institutions to comply with the provisions contained therein in the approval of the approved bill. And sometimes the investments go bust and they don't have any uh, recourse to anybody or any institution that would make them get uh, part or all of their deposits with the, the banks. That's why this scheme is established to uh, give some protection to the depositors, especially small depositors. That's why, that's why the emphasis is the emphasis is on small depositors. So, for instance, corporate bodies who go to deposit are not entitled to the uh, protection. Mm -hmm. Now, the scheme establishes a corporation and uh, and establishes a fund. Now, the fund will be managed by the corporation, so that all members. In fact, all banks and microfinance uh, institutions or specialized deposit-taking institutions which are licensed by the Bank of Ghana to operate are automatically members of the scheme. And they must contribute a kind of a premium, insurance premium, to this scheme so that where any of the operations of uh, the deposit-taking institutions go bust, depositors can be protected to a certain limit. In the case of banks, the maximum protection that will be given to depositors amounts to 6,250 Ghana cities. Whilst with specialized deposit-taking institutions, the amount that can be uh, paid back to them is 1,250. Uh, These are the provisions of the scheme. So it seeks to protect uh, small depositors. If, for instance, I go to deposit 50,000 Ghana cities in a small deposit taking institution, a specialized deposit taking institution, and then the operations of that bank goes bankrupt, whatever, and I put in a claim, I can get only up to 1,250. So Benjamin Podo is a member of parliament or the select committee on finance committee as well in parliament. Now, on the phone now is the banking analyst Nana Otu Achampong to give us expert analysis on the view of banking law and its impact on the industry. Nana, you're welcome to the marketplace. Thank you. Exactly what does this law seeks to achieve and essentially why should, why should it be that different? 
Um, which of the laws? There are two banking laws. So, exactly. Not, not, that the, the, not that the postal protection bill. What was actually uh, the bill that was passed yesterday by Parliament we are talking? Oh, okay. Exactly. That is the banks, banks and other specialized deposit exactly so, yes. Act. Yes. Mm. Well, what you seek to achieve is to consolidate all the bits and pieces about banking law um, since 2004. Presently, what we have is we got the uh, Banking Act of 2004, amended by in 2007. Um, but if you take, for instance, the rural community bank, they don't have a specific law. It was done by administrative uh, directive, and therefore this one seeks to bring all of them under one law. Once this uh, bill has become law, then it it repeals all the. Uh, the other two laws, that is the two, 2004 Banking Act and the 2007 Banking Amendment Act. Mm. Uh, and, and for the first time, the institutions under uh, the banking law uh, have been increased from four sectors to five. Now, these are the sectors. You've got universal banks. Then you have savings and loan companies, you have rural banks, you have microfinance institutions, and now it's added finance houses. So okay. finance houses are the latest addition to the list of institutions that are allowed to take money from the public and grant loans. So bank financial uh, institutions. Okay. So they, that, that's what the law is going but to do. Another, another objective, according to the bill, as um, passed by Parliament yesterday, mm -hmm. is to also seek to sort of like um, break the inconsistencies in the banking yeah. laws. What are some of these inconsistencies recognized okay. by this new law? Okay. Some of the inconsistencies are the laws relating to some of the institutions. Apart from the universal banks, for which special act was passed, if you take all the subsequent ones, rural banks, uh, microfinance institutions, savings and loan companies, there, there hasn't been any specific law passed to uh, bring them under the law. And, and so it's all been done through administrative guidelines. Okay. And now they are all coming under the law. Hmm. Okay, so that's a, a, a particular, that, as, as a lawyer to say, lacuna identified by this particular law. Exactly. Seeking yeah. to also at the same time um, mm. address it, basically. Okay, yeah. fine. Another thing too that we also did identify as part of the objective of this particular law, the bill, that's if in the event uh, the president has sent to it to become law, mm. is to also regulate and supervise foreign banks that are actively working here in Ghana. And also to sort of like uh, sort of foster some cooperation between Ghana banks in Ghana and other jurisdiction. How does this bill? How would this bill seek to do that? Well, uh, before until now, the, the banks that are directly regulated have been those which have been registered in Ghana mm. under the Ghana Companies Act. Now, foreign banks appear to have escaped in that because they have not been registered in Ghana, but they, they've got, like, branch offices, they, they were outside the regulatory regime. Now, this law seeks to establish that as long as you are doing business here uh, in banking, mm. then you come under the regulator, and that is uh, the powers that have been given to the regulator now okay. to regulate all these institutions. Okay. So, now, now let's... Th th I'm curious, uh, because... This controversial issue of um, mobile money or electronic um, money transfers was yeah. not mentioned in here, but it's been quite controversial over the period. So, under what would this come? Can, does this law or this bill sort of like um, capture the operations of these uh, telcos as well? No, those ones are still through administrative guidelines that have been established. But for the first time, Bank of Ghana has now created a payment department. Mm. Uh, previously, the, it wasn't a department. Now it's a, a department. And that department is uh, the, the side that will directly regulate the payment system, including mobile money. So mobile money now has been recognized as a force to reckon with in the banking uh, services sector. 
And so the regulator is now on cue to, to regulate them. And, and, and so this, this bill, or the, the, yes, this bill doesn't directly uh, handle mobile money, but indirectly it does handle mobile money. And okay. uh, the, as I said, through administrative guidelines. Okay, we thank you very much, Nana Otua Champon, for your time here on the marketplace. Nana Otua Champon is a banking consultant and also an executive member of the Osset to the Second Executive Education and Research Center in Kumase. That was it. We're taking a short break. Marketplace returns after this break. You will come back. And the local textile industry is set to be recording some significant growth in recent years, despite unfair competition from cheap imported prints. The industry has been on the decline over the period due to the influx of Chinese textiles bearing pirated local designs. Let's have more on this. Local textile manufacturing firms have played a major role in the country's development, creating jobs for thousands. Statistics show local textile companies produced a total of about 129 million yards in 1977. This had, however, declined to a total of about 46 million yards in 1995. But ahead of marketing at GTP, Stephen Badu says, unlike some years ago, the industry is now recording a 5% year-on-year growth despite the unfair competition. The textile industry or the African print industry, it's a growing one. It's a booming one. Year-on-year, um, -year, we estimate, it's an estimate, we don't have the actual figures, but we estimate that the market size is about 110, 120 million yards on average for Ghana. It's growing about 5% or so every year. This is, we estimate that it will, it's valued about between 150, 160 million dollars. Well, so it's quite a, a, a big uh, industry and it's growing. Evolving global fashion trends have boosted the appeal of African prints on the international market. Stephen Badu says local manufacturers like GTP are capitalizing on this by producing about $8 million worth of exports across the African sub-region. We are into exports. I mean, GTP, Wooden, we do exports. And if I pick the figures for, let's say, 2014, we, we managed to export about $8 million worth of uh, fabrics to mostly West African states. So we export to up to DRC. We export to Uganda, to Kenya, and some, a little to South Africa. Stakeholders, however, want government to implement better policies and incentives to drive sustainable growth in the sector. Now, in other stories, the president of Organizational Development Institute, a human-centered human developmental institution, Noble Kwamawu, has urged facilitative approach to shaping up workers' attitude to engender change in various organizations and the society as a whole. Speaking at the maiden matriculation of the institute in Accra, Noble Komewu called for a change in the training procedures by making students more interactive with top management to enhance their understanding of issues right from where they emanated. When you tell somebody what to do, sometimes they resist. Even if they comply, it's out of respect. Their heart is not in. But when you facilitate, they put in their own. Secondly, uh, no client ever tells uh, a provider all the story that is to be known. If they gave you, for instance, 60%, you cannot get 100% result out of 60%. But if you involve them, the 40% they did not tell you, they will make use of it in contributing their thoughts to how it should happen. So it makes it more successful than other developmental approaches. One of the philosophies of OD is that it is managed from the top. As they go, they know they have to talk to the management of the, the system to understand what OD is, how different it is from other developmental approaches. Once they buy in the idea, they will support them. Remember, the culture of an organization is created and manipulated by top management. If that same top management says, yes, we like what you are bringing, come and do it, 
they will not resist. Now time to go across the continent to look at how the major your major investments are faring and also here in Ghana how your markets are doing. Now we're starting from Africa. We look at the top indices here on the continent from South Africa. The FTSC All Share Index recorded a positive 123.87 points but declined in year-on-year -year performance at its record 0.89 percent per annum and in nigeria the nsc or share index also went down marginally by 40.40 point as the year on year still remains 0 0.60 in the positive region now we look at egypt and where the egs 30 index is taking us as a decline marginally by 11.29 but the year on year still remains the, the best and the topmost here on the continent of africa as it records positive 7.14 percent per annum and in morocco the Moroccan All Share Index also dropped by 36.56 points yesterday to close the year around 7.38% per annum. Another fantastic equity market there in there. And also in Kenya, the Nairobi All Share Index recorded a decline of 0.82 as the year on year still follows around 3.78% per annum in the negative that's a downside of it now moving on here in africa we're looking at tunisia and the twin index as a benchmark which records the performance of the tunisian market recorded a decline of 43.31 but the year on year still remains an attractive 6.91 percent per annum and here in ghana still struggling to recover the mark the ghanaian market recorded a decline of 10.38 as the year on year still remains negative 10.38 percent per annum and the Bose regional du Valais mobilier which is the composite index recording the performance of the various equities in the francophone west africa also recorded a decline of 3.73 but the year on year also dropped marginally to about 2.96 percent in the decline now finally the mauritian market which is measured by the semidex also dropped marginally by 2.11 as the year on year remains negative 2.98%. Now, let's look at the various uh, markets across the continent, see how they did impact on the major indices across the continent. Now, in Ghana, a total volume of 145,998 was recorded at a total value of 316,686 Ghana CDs. That brought market capitalization marginally down to 54,758,000. 56 million Ghana cities. And as I did indicate earlier, that also affected the performance of the composite index to 10.38. And the financial index also suffered marginally to around negative 13.30. And now these were the top five or four major um, equities that moved the market yesterday, topping it by Aluex, which recorded a positive zero, zero um, persuasive per share as it closed 13. Pesos special. EGA also lost one. ETI lost one. And Guinness Ghana Brewery Limited also lost two. That's exactly it. Now, let's go to the international market to look at how the commodities market is also faring. As crude is recording some slow growth, but today it's gained about $1.45 to be trading around $47.71 per barrel. And gold, after losing $6.46, um, it's actually recording or trading around $1,347.88 per ounce. And cocoa gained $12 to be trading around 3113 So that will be it for the market here in Ghana, across the continent, also globally. Now, finally, let's look at how the Ghana currency city is faring against the top five trading currencies across the globe against the united states dollar the cd lost some value against the british pound it lost against the euro it lost and also lost to the chinese one but gained against the cfa franc marginally so that'll be it for the market here in ghana across the continent and also how the commodity market also did fair here my name is john kojo amuakwen